if we would like to speak about uh, the pyramid of the King Unas, once you see the pyramid by yourself, like the pyramid of the King Titi, it is just like a heap of sands, just a heap of sands. You cannot even imagine this is a pyramid of the Egyptian king. But this is something very unique for us, something very, very important. Why? Because the pyramid of the King Unas himself, it got the first written uh, pyramid text ever in the Egyptian history and the Egyptian civilization. So once you get inside the pyramid, this is actually the antechamber and the peril uh, leading us into the peril chamber of the king himself. So what is the pyramid text? This is something very important. You should speak about it with your guests. This is one of the most famous text in ancient times. It's written in hieroglyphics. It's written in hieroglyphics. And you are going to explain your guest what is the word hieroglyphics. It came from hieros glophos, the Greek word, hieros glophos. It means the holy writing, the holy writing. Hieroglyphics inside this one showing us what is the ancient Egyptian people think about it during the ancient times. So at the early beginning, when we study this one, it will be over, over than a 700 phrase or 700 uh, important texts speaking about what the people can expect in the second life. And it's actually divided into uh, sections. Some of them speaking about the journey or the trip of the king himself during the second life. And almost of these ones or these phrases started by Jid Midu. Jid Midu in hieroglyphics, it means Ta'wiza. This is actually, or it's something like the beginning of a speech, the beginning of a speech. And then it is repeating the name of the ancient Egyptian king himself. So we are going to find the name of the King Unas repeated uh, more than a time or hundred times at the same at the same uh, pyramid. Once we get inside the pyramid chamber, we will see the sarcophagus of the king with all this uh, lovely and nice decoration inside it, with some motivate motivations, and we are going to see the stars just like that. So, what is the idea of having stars? and got all this decoration inside the burial chamber of the king. It actually gave us the idea of ancient Egyptian people about the burial chamber of the king. So here is the king inside his tomb, inside the burial chamber. At the top, we can see the roof, and this roof actually got the stars. So it is like the sky, the heaven. And the bottom part of the burial chamber, it is actually the land. So the king himself between the sky and between the land and his sarcophagus will got the eternity and the immortality life once he got between the sky and the land. Or we can say it between the goddess Nut, the goddess of the sky and the god Jeb or the god Geb, the god of the earth during that. The sarcophagus of him giving him uh, the eternity and immortality life. One of the most important things you can see it at the tomb of the king uh, Unas, and this is a very important tricky. Once you see the wall of the king himself with the light off, and you can use just a torch of your mobile phone, you will see another representation of the king Unas himself doing the same uh the same uh, ceremony or uh, sermonic uh, scenes of uh, the hepsid which we were uh, we already uh, spoke about it at the uh, king uh, Zoser. have to give uh, free time of your valuable guest to enjoy the pyramid of the king unas this is one of the uh, important things which you have to give time to your valuable guest this is the scene i was talking about so this is after you uh, turn off the light and your valuable guest will see something like that. It is what we can see behind the scene of the King uh, Unas uh, pyramid. This is the explanation of what is a pyramid text. And after that, we can speak about Saqqara tombs. Uh, Ola was uh, asking me if we do have some tombs at Saqqara, 
we can visit it. Yes, something very important. Next to Unas, we have some tombs, like the tomb of Unas Anh, like uh, the tomb of Nefret. All these tombs, actually, you can visit it next to the pyramid of the king uh, Unas. But one of the most important tombs, I prefer to speak about it, it is actually the tomb of Kagimni. You will take your car, drive away to the other side of Saqqara, and at Saqqara, you can visit the tomb of Meruruka, the tomb of Kagimni, the tomb of uh, uh, Nikau Isisi, over than a 20 tomb in this area. So, the high officials got a place next to their kings, and at Saqqara, we have over than 350 old kingdom noble tombs in this, in this area. The most famous ones, it will be the one of Meruruka, Kagimni, Nikau Isisi, T, Bita Hotub, and Akhet Hotub, and the Mastaba of the two brothers, and the most famous uh, uh, new uh, and celebrity excavated tombs, Khoui and Wahti. When you speak about the sixth uh, dynasty, Mastaba, the Mastaba of uh, Meruruka, uh, Meruruka actually he was the vizier or the first man, the prime minister after uh, the king uh, Titi. Uh, the king Titi was a stepfather of the king uh, of uh, Meruruka. Meruruka got a very high and a great position during the sixth dynasty as he was the controller of all uh, the Egyptian kingdom during that time and he uh, got married with uh, the princess Wa'atit Ghedher. Wa'atit Ghedher, this is the name of the uh, daughter of the Egyptian king Titi and by the way his tomb is one of the most massive tombs at Saqqara and at the old kingdom as well. The tomb itself is over than 30 or 32 uh, rooms or chambers uh, divided into three sections. One section for Moriruka himself, another section was for the lady, just we can see it here, and the third section was for the son. So it's a section A was for Moriruka, the section B here for the lady, the wife, and the section B was a C, sorry, was for Teti uh, Anch or Anch Teti. This is the son of uh, Meruruka. This is what you are not going to, to see inside Meruruka. This is the burial chamber of Meruruka. Once you get inside the tomb of Meruruka, you will see the shaft, but it's a closed and locked. But this is what you need to show by printing these pictures to your valuable guest to see because they are asking what is inside the uh, tomb itself. Okay, so one of the most important tombs we have at Saqqara, the new discovery, because this is one of the most famous questions your valuable guest will ask you, the tomb of Khoui and the tomb of, of Wahti. This is the most recent excavation tombs at Saqqara discovered in the uh, last couple of, uh, of, my, uh, of years. Okay, one of the lovely tombs at Saqqara, it is actually the tomb of uh, Kahai. Almost of the painting showing the high official with his wife and both of them facing or sitting in front of what we can call it the offering the offering table, the offering table. The daily life scenes of Saqqara showing the people hunting the birds, fishing and doing agriculture, all these ones you are going to see together. When you go to uh, the section of the King Titi, you will see some of the tombs facade just like that. So this is the facade of Inu Minu tomb. This is behind the tomb of Meruruka. Uh, Senor, uh, Senor Mosad was asking me uh, about uh, this section behind Titi. One of the most famous tombs at uh, the section of uh, the King Titi, it is actually the tomb of Nikau Isisi. I do recommend visiting this tomb. Uh, the tomb of Nikau Isisi, one of the most beautiful ones, or one of the most beautiful tombs, where we can find its color, it is very lovely, colorful stuff. 
and even we still see the painting showing the birds and showing the offering. This is the main section you are going to visit at Saqqara. The tomb of T, one of the most important tombs at Saqqara, by the way, it is very close to the Serapium, very close to Serapium. The Serapium of uh, Saqqara and the section of T, it is actually located at the western section or the western side of Saqqara. What is the most important thing of the tomb of T? You can get inside the burial chamber of T. T, by the way, was one of the high officials of the fifth dynasty, where you can see the daily life scenes and the uh, chambers inside with a false door. It is one of the most lovely and unique uh, things. And you can get down using the stairs leading you inside the burial chamber. What is the word serapium at Saqqara? The word serapium itself, it's a delivered from the name of God Serapis, Serapis. And by the way, the God Serapis himself, he worshiped during the time, he worshiped during the time of the Greek people. He was one of the created or the new created gods of the new era of Ptolemaic people. They need to make the Egyptian people join them understand their religion. That's why they create the god Serapis. And the Serapium itself started during the New Kingdom, and it was actually used during the Greek Roman time. Actually, when you get inside the Serapium and it has a special ticket, the Serapium uh, tombs, it has a special ticket, and it was uh, for the sacred animal, the uh, the pool or the sacred animal, we do have a link between uh, Memphis uh, temples and the Serapium uh, of uh, Saqqara. Uh, actually, we discovered uh, a lot of uh, uh, sarcophagus of uh, the sacred uh, god or the sacred animal in this one, but only a few uh sarcophagus was inscribed just like that almost of the uh, uh, sarcophagus was empty but only three or uh, uh, three sarcophagus was uh, scribed when you speak about the serapium of sakura you need to mention the excavation of august Marriott at the middle of the uh, 19th uh, century and in, in uh, his excavation he bumped one of the sarcophagus and he discovered the body of uh, the uh, sacred god Apis, uh, the bull, and he discovered some collection with him. By the way, this is one of the uh, masterpieces of the Egyptian museum. It's actually exhibit in the second floor in the mummification room of the animals. So you will get your car after the ticket office in your left side, you will see the complex of the King Titi, and you will see the pyramid of the King Unas and the other tombs. In the right side, you will see the section of the King uh, Titi, and you will see the uh, tombs of Meruka, tombs of uh, Kagimni, uh, tomb of uh, Nikau Isisi. All this one dates back to the sixth dynasty, and this is a huge section. We call it Titi section. Uh, by the north, uh, west side, you will see the second, the first, and the second uh, uh, dynasty ones, and this is not open for not open for for public. In this section, the uh, west side of uh, Zoser and uh, the King Teti, you will see the tomb of uh, T and the Serapium of of Saqqara. And this is actually the main stuff you are going to visit at Saqqara. So guys, if you do have any questions at this section of Saqqara, please go ahead because we need to move on speaking about Giza Pyramids Necropolis. علشان نقدر نحكي فيها لما ندخل اي مقبره من جوه عيون يا سنيور عيون ذا ديلي لايف انسكريبشن انسايد ذا تومبس اوف ساكارا سو جايز سمثينج فيري امبورتنت يو شود منشن تو يور فاليبل جيست ذا بيجست ديفرنت بيتوين ذا انسكريبشنز 
which they are going to see inside the pyramid, like the pyramid text inside the pyramid of the king uh, Titi and the pyramid of the king Unas, and the inscription and the daily life scenes of the high official. Why we do have every single detail of the high official's tombs inside Saqqara or at Saqqara, Giza, and the other tombs. They need to copy what they already got and what they already have in the uh, first life. That's why they made their tombs uh, just like that. First of all, we will have uh, the superstructure, the superstructure. And then we have the substructure. The superstructure was for the visitor. So the family, friends and lovers can go and visit him and even can give him the offering. The substructure, it will be for his sarcophagus, his mummy and the furniture and the collection he needed for the second life. So once you get inside the facade of the tomb of Kagimni, you will see Kagimni himself represented in a huge scale, just like that, wearing uh, the uh, headdress, holding the stick, and it's something like he is welcoming the people who is coming to visit to visit him. You will get inside the tomb of Kagenni, and once you get, you will see some of the daily uh, live uh, scenes inside the tomb uh, of Kagenni. So what is the main stuff you are going to see inside the tomb of Kagemni? Once you get inside, you will see the people or uh, the fishers. The people is fishing like that. So they are uh, now uh, having a papyrus boat. This is a boat made out of papyrus. And they are getting the fish by several uh, ways. This is actually the same ways which the ancient people did it and have it uh, during that time. One of the lovely scenes we have it at the tomb of uh, Kagemni, this person feeding a very little baby of animal. Can you see? He, he put some food in his mouth and he is trying to make it easy for the little baby and he is feeding him directly, just like that. Some scholar think that he is a dog, but some other scholar think that he is a big khanzir. But let's say that during the ancient times, we don't have any uh, materials or we don't have any traces to say that we do have uh, the bigs in ancient times. So this is the other uh, scenes we have it inside the tomb of Kagenni, where we can see they are hunting or they are actually getting the hippopotamus. By the way, hippos in ancient Egypt or hippopotamus in ancient Egypt, it was a sign of devil, or let's say that a sign of the god Seth. That's why they are representing from a time to the other, uh, hunting them or they are trying to kill them as we, uh, as we can see. One of the lovely scenes inside the tomb of Kagemni, it will be the dancing. You just got the first hole of Kagemni, what we can call it, the Beller's Hole, or the main hole of Kagemni. You will see the dancers, and even you will see the clappers. also. And this is one of the very strange scenes we have in the so because it was the beginning of depicting this kind and representing this kind of scenes. Because can you see the dancers themselves got a very hard and difficult dancing. In the future uh, scenes, which they already uh, depicted and represented in the other tombs, they made the dancers in a very uh, uh, better way, better than the ones of, uh, of Kagemni. So you got inside uh, the tomb of Kagemni and you would have, they are putting all the uh, birds which they already hunted and they have the nets, which we can call it hunting the birds by using, uh, by using the net. One of the uh, famous uh, scenes of, uh, uh, of uh, the tomb of Kagemni, where we can find the people here, 
the people here recording every single detail which they have and can see the word sish. Sish, it means scribe, scribe. And behind the sish, we can see all the offering and even the animals which Titi himself having and these people leading them. And here we have a gentleman, he is holding a papyrus sheet or a papyrus roll and he is representing this one to Titi. It's something like he is giving him a report like a high official holding a report and giving it to the owner of the uh, tomb. We still have the uh, representation of, uh, of Kagemni himself having all the offering. So we have several people in here. This is what we can call it the offering holders in here. And Kagemni himself, he is sitting on the um, the chair as an apple or one of the most famous people and the important people. And the whole time we will see Kagimni, we will see Kagimni representing in a very high and huge scale, but the other people representing in a small scale. During the whole tomb, we will see the people themselves represented in a very small scale, but Kagemni himself representing in a very huge scale. Why? What is the point of representing Kagemni in a very huge scale, but the people in a very small little ones? This is showing him as the hero person of this scene. And this is actually to make it easy to make it easy for the, uh, the spirit of the deceased to recognize him. The most important thing inside the tomb of a high official, it will be the false door. So guys, have you ever heard about the word false door? The people can call it the false door or the fake door. What is the function of the false door? When you get inside the tomb and you see something like that, a false door, you will be very, very lucky. You will be very, very lucky because you will know all the uh, titles of that person. So in here, we can see the title of, you will see the title of Kagemni in here. So Kagimni himself, he was the second man or the first man after uh, the king himself. And even we can got the name of Kagimni at the top. So he is represented in here and there and there. And actually the name of Kagimni in here written sometimes as Kagimni. Kagimni, this is his uh, full name. And sometimes as Mimi. Mimi. And by the way, Mimi, this is the nickname of Kagimni. Arfin is Middala. Kagimni got the nickname and his nickname is, uh, is Mimi. Okay. Some people want to know the function of the false door. So you can make it easy for your, your uh, valuable guests. So as the great scholar said, the false door is a gate, a gate between the second life and the first life. So the high official himself can come from the second life to enjoy all the offering, which is the family, the friends, and the lovers put it for him, and he can enjoy it and then can come back again. Some people try to make it easy for uh, themselves, and they said that it's something like a Stargate. Of course, you know the movie of the Stargate. So it is a gate open only for one person, Kagemni himself, because each person is supposed to have his false door. And he can cross it from the first life to the second life, and even he can get back. Guys, you need to have a better and a good knowledge of the uh, false doors, because that will be a very important representation to get a better understanding of uh, a better understanding of the tombs of uh, the high official. Here, some uh, walls have some paintings, and this is, by the way, inside the last 
the last room of Kagimni, and those people uh, have a very uh, nice, colorful stuff because this is the most important and protected uh, room uh, of the uh, of Kagimni. We have them having their uh, jars or these jars. Some people uh, say that this jars was for the liquid offering was for the liquid offering. So what is the liquid offering? Sometimes the people as they have uh, dogs and geese and bulls and animals, they need to have some liquid offerings, something like the milk, something like the wine, and sometimes they need to have their perfume. That's why they make it in the small and little uh, and little uh, jars. So this is actually the north wall of Kagenni uh, last chamber. We can see all these people holding the small the small mm -hmm. jars. And in here we can see Kagimni represented in a very huge and high scale. This is very important, guys. You would be asking this question. Why Kagimni represented in a very high scale, but the other people very, very small? Was he very huge just like that in the uh, normal life? Of course not. He got the same size, but he is representing himself as a hero because he is a tomb owner and he needs his spirit to recognize him easy in the second life. And when the spirit come and enjoy all this one, it needs a huge figure to come into uh, that figure. This is one of the most uh, colorful um, uh, walls and colorful uh, chambers uh, inside Kagemi. So exploration or exploring the tombs of the high official we will see all the daily life scenes. Sometimes you will see agriculture. Sometimes you will see hunting the birds. Sometimes you will see fishing. And sometimes you are going to see the tomb owner himself in front of the offering holders. They are giving him the offering with a very different types of offering as we can see Kagemni right now. If you would like to have a very, uh, 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 what we can call it detailed uh, stuff of Kagimni and his, uh, his description of his tomb, I can send you the publication of uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Yvonne Harper or uh, Nagib Qanawati. So he got all the, uh, uh, the daily life scenes of Kagimni. This is the titles of Kagimni and Kagimni hold a very huge and important titles. The title showing us how important was Kagimni in the sixth dynasty uh, during the time of the king uh, the king Titi. The most important title of him, it was Thati. Thati in hieroglyphics, it means the vizier or the second or the prime minister of uh, the king uh, Titi.